Hey everyone, Donovan Brown here. Welcome to the DevOps for ASP.NET Developer Series. In this episode, we're going to focus on work item tracking. Using Azure boards, you can plan and track your work using product backlogs, task boards, and Kanban boards. You can also plan your releases using delivery plans. You can also customize the process templates to fit your team's specific needs. Let's see how Abel and Jeremy plan their work. Abel, earlier we were talking about all the Azure DevOps functionality, and mm -hmm. you touched on a piece of it called Azure Boards. Right. And that's something, you know, I mentioned I have post-it notes all over the place <laughs> to keep track of work. Yes. And you said we could track everything from any type of unit of work, defects, et cetera. Can you dive into that a little bit more? Absolutely. So like you are saying, with Azure Boards, you have the ability to track any unit of work for your project. Now, everything is really kind of geared towards an agile type of methodology, right? Okay. Uh, but there are a couple different uh, methodologies that you can use. So why don't I just dive in and start showing you? Sounds good. All right. So what you need to do, the first thing you need to do is you need to create a project inside of your Azure DevOps organization. So let's go ahead and create a brand new project. So we'll give this a name and we'll call this Demo2. And before we create it, let's open up the advanced window. And you can see you have choices for the version control system that you want to use, and also the work item process. Okay. So depending on the process that you choose, that will change the work items a little bit. So inside of Agile, if I choose Agile, what you'll end up getting is you'll get, be getting things like user stories and, and impediments and, and bugs and things like that and tasks and epics and so on and so forth. I don't right. want any impediments, so I wouldn't <laughs> choose that, right? <laughs> right, right. Um, if you use Scrum, then all of a sudden you start getting work items that are Scrum terms. Right? You have backlog items instead of a user story. Okay. Uh, and the states will be a little bit different. And then finally with CMMI, uh, then you, you get an, an, another set of work items as well. Okay. And is there a way to reference or see sort of an overview of how these different processes compare to each other? Do we have that in docs somewhere? Absolutely. Just go to docs.microsoft.com and you can, uh, I'll post the URL at the end of this and you'll be able to see and read exactly which each process template does. Okay, great. All right, so for this demo, we'll go ahead and just choose Agile and we will create our new project. And so now it will go ahead and create our project for us. And once it does that, I can show you the different type of work items that you can actually go in there and create. Okay. And actually while it's creating here, oh, it's already done. Look at that. We'll jump into the boards. And the first page that you see, this will just show you all the work items that have recently been updated or, or created or anything like that. Um, but when I introduce boards to people, what I like to do is I like to start from the backlog level. Because most Agile projects, what you want to do is you want to start with a backlog. Right. It's the things to do, basically. Yeah. A wish right. list, right, of everything that you want. Right. So I was recently on a project where somebody actually put on their backlog they want a time machine. <laughs> <laughs> and it got prioritized really low, right? right? but it, it always stayed So there. it's on the backlog, it's in the back of mine, but yeah. it might be a while before that. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get to it anytime soon. Something to tackle, right. Yeah. But the whole idea of the backlog is, is you just throw everything that you want on there, and then you do need to prioritize that, right? Right. So this right here is our backlog, so we can go ahead and start adding work. So let's add a new user story. Um, because I'm so original, I'll just, I'll just <laughs> do this. We can add another user story. User story two? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to add one more. I'm going to guess this is user story three. Man. Right, you're up in the search bar now. There we go. There we go. Right. Okay. So notice this is just a list, right? You can organize it by dragging and dropping. So you just prioritize <coughs> user story three above user story two. Yep. Okay. So prioritizing, super, super easy. You can just move things up or down. Okay. Right. Drag and drop, everything works great. Uh, the other thing that you can do is you can click on the user story itself and that will open up the user story, right? Because so now not only do you have a title, you can add a description, you can add acceptance criteria, you can add discussions. I can do things like uh, let's send an email to Donovan. That's always fun. <laughs> this 
work item is messed up. Right. So then, of course, I can save it. And as soon as I save that, it will send Donovan an email saying, somebody's asking you a question about this. And then he can come in here and answer Add another question. comment of his own or? Yeah. OK. So this is kind of cool. What I like about this is it captures that type of back and forth questions that a lot of people have. But it captures it all within the work item. So that's tracked. And you can always go back to it and see what's going on. As opposed, a lot of times, it's like in a Slack channel. And then, well, then you lose it and the <laughs> yeah. flow, it scrolls away. Yep. So it sounds like um, both for remote teams and for teams that might be together but prefer asynchronous collaboration, this is a great way to capture threads and, and uh, discussions relative to backlog items. Absolutely, absolutely. So here we go. We create a backlog full of user stories, right? Um, the other thing that we can do is we can break apart our user stories down into individual tasks. That okay. developers need to do. So the way I usually like to scope things is I like to say tasks, let's make tasks something that you can get done within a day. So like three to five hours worth of work. And if it's bigger than that, it probably should be a user story. And a user story, it should be small enough that you can finish it within your sprint. Right, an increment of delivery. Yep, yep, yep. yep. And then if it's bigger than that, then you know, maybe it needs to be turned into an epic, or maybe it needs to be turned into a feature. Right? It just slowly gets bigger and bigger. Right. Okay. So anyway, we can take our user story and break that down into individual tasks. Let's go ahead and add a task. I know, I'm so original, task one. Yeah. And then we'll add a couple of them here. Let's add another one. I'm thinking task two. <laughs> you know, you're just brilliant. And for user story one, let's go ahead and add one for here as well. And we'll call that task three. All right. So it's easy enough to create your wish list. You can prioritize it. And now you can break down your work into individual tasks. Right? Okay. And this whole UI is fully drag and droppable. So if I really wanted to and I want, wanted to reparent this, I can drag this and reparent it just like that as well. Okay. So super easy to manipulate the things that you want to do. So this is great. Um, then you can start taking your tasks. And notice we have all these different iterations, right? Iteration one, iteration two, iteration three. Right. So these would be like our individual sprints. So um, if you have a really, really long backlog, you can start dragging your work into your different iterations as well. So this is, uh, we're basically committing to what we're going to do in the first iteration and guessing at what is feasible down yeah. the road. Yep. Okay. Yep. So this list is great in terms of adding work or maybe even doing some super high level projection of, I think we're going to get about this much done you know, by this date. Um, but what it's not good at is tracking your work on a day-to-day -day basis. Right? right, so we have the daily stand-up or whatever, and yes. we want a snapshot of, of just what's important for that day. Yeah, we're just for that sprint, right? right? Let's say our sprint is for two weeks or something like that. So then we also have a sprint view, where if we click on sprints, it'll bring us to the, sprint that, that the current sprint that's running. And you notice we have the two work items broken down into the tasks. And of course, as user needs to do their work, they can just start dragging their work across the board. Well, assuming I drag <laughs> it all the way over there. Let's, let me try that again. Okay, well, right. I can't resolve it right now, but anyway. So you can just slowly walk your work items all the way across, just like that. Right. So in a visual manner, you'll be able to see everything that's happening from one day to the next from your sprint. And by updating your work items like this, this will automatically update the times and everything like that, which means all of your burn down charts and burn up charts those automatically get created for you. Nice. Yep. So these are when we looked previously at source control and we were mapping a check-in to a work item. Yes. These are the work items we can associate with, and this is a view we can take. Now, will this view allow us to drill into related changes? Does it work both ways? Absolutely, it does. So let me jump to a project where we've actually done something, which uh, in the last episode, let's look at this work item. Landing page text is wrong. I did a couple of check-ins for that, right? Right. If we look at this, under development, here are all the changes that I made. There it is, right And there. these are links. So this is when I did my merge. And I can just click on it, and it'll take me directly to what happened during that merge. That's nice. I love that integration to get exactly where you want to go. Yep, yep. So the other thing that I wanted to show you, um, 
is for each of these individual work items, you have the ability to link them as well. So there's like a parent-child type of link, so you've got a user story that's broken down into tasks. Uh, and so your related work, you can use the UI and it'll link everything for you automatically, or if you want to link things in a manual type fashion, you can do this as well. And create a new item on the fly. Yep. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. So once again, this really helps with the, the project planning. Like as, as a developer, a lot of times when I first start my sprints, um, we break things down into user stories, and then when we have our first sprint planning meeting, I try to start estimating or breaking apart the user stories into tasks that I think I'll need to do to finish that particular user story, and then that gives me a pretty good idea of how long it's going to take for me to finish that user story. So how much flexibility do we have with this board? I know some teams may like the statuses out of the box that goes you know, left to right to, to close. So I may want a, a preliminary step, or I noticed you did some custom swim lanes earlier. Yeah, so let me go ahead and jump over to the boards again. So this is our backlog, right? You know, as soon as this refreshes. I'm going to jump into, this is the boards view. Okay. Right? So before, we were looking at something as a backlog. It's just an ordered list. Not very good at tracking your work. But if you go to the boards, that's when you can start seeing everything in swim lanes, columns, et cetera, where you can start dragging your work across. Right? So this is the Kanban board yes. style. Right? This is a Kanban board. Now, this board here is fully customizable, where you can make it look however you want to. So you can add your own columns. You can add your own swim lanes. You can add rules to, say, if it's a priority one, you can change the color of the work item as well. Um, you can add whatever field you want onto the card, right? Fully customizable. Okay. So the way that you would do that is from the board itself, click on the gears. And here, this will pull up menu settings for everything that you want to do, right? Um, so for instance, if you have a user story, you can show do you want to show these fields? And then if you want to add additional fields, you can as well. So maybe we want to add a field. Let's add the priority. And we'll go ahead and save and close that. And then you'll notice everything it starts showing the priority. Nice. Right. If we want to add some swim lanes or some columns, let's go ahead and add a swim lane. We'll go ahead and save it, and immediately refreshes with that. Right. If you want to add your own custom columns, you can as well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, another thing that I like about this is it does show all the tasks that are associated to this particular user story. And as they're finished, they get crossed off. Now, one of the things I noticed is as you were working on this board, in the upper right, we started seeing some of these charts refresh. Yeah. So to tell me a little bit about those, those charts, what do those do? So this is a cumulative flow chart. Um, so as you're adding work and as you're finishing work, um, it will start showing up on, on this. So these are, are charts that if you have like a scrum master, uh, they can use that to judge and view, oh, how's the progress? What's the progress my team is using? So this is how we can do projections and estimates, right? We start yeah. to see closing between open and, and done tasks and, and where they converge is where we think we'll, we'll be done. Yep. Okay. Yep, 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 yep. And the other thing that I really love about this Kanban board is I can start creating work directly from this Kanban board, right? I can start creating branches for myself to work in. So I showed this last time as well, but we can just go to the work item itself, create a new branch, and then for that wow. right there, we'll create the branch for you and automatically link that branch with your work item. So in a workflow as a developer, if I've just finished the task, I could go to the board, what's the next priority item I have for the sprint, start with the new branch, and get right to coding automatically. Yep. yep. And all of that linkage of this particular branch is for this particular work item. As a dev, I don't have to worry about that anymore. When I check in my commit, I don't have to say commit, pound, and oh, what's the, what's the, what's the, the ID number, right, and to, to get the linkage working. That linkage will just automatically happen right. for you. That's nice. So, super powerful, super useful. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about this is that all of these work items, these are fully customizable as well. So out of the box, you get a bunch of fields, right? You get things like the title, the states, the description, the acceptance criteria, planning story points, priority, so on and so forth. Um, you have some other tabs as well that you can go to. 
Uh, there's a history tab as well. Oh, this, uh, I should mention this as well. Everything that you do on a work item is tracked and saved. So the historical tracking of what happened to this work, that is all tracked through this work, the, the history field as well. And this is even linked item. So oh, yeah, as yeah. status has changed because of builds or whatever. Yes. Okay. Right. So nice. this is what I mean about if you use Azure DevOps end to end, right, all five parts of the suite, you get this unprecedented view into the health of your project. You start seeing everything that's happening, right? You can see all the linkages, and of course, you can also attach things. Right? So this is like an email attachment. You can attach images. Uh, Maybe video have a files. storyboard, something like that, related yeah. to the the item. Yep. Okay. Yep. 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 So super super useful. But a lot of times people tell me. This is great, but I need some extra fields. Can I add extra fields? Or, or maybe I want to change the way the states work. Can I change, you know, they, they, they want to customize it, which makes perfect sense. And the answer is yes, you absolutely can customize these work items. You can add fields. Um, you can even create your own work items if you wanted to. Okay. And the way that you do that is let's go ahead and go into project settings. And then from project settings, Go to Project Configuration, and it says this project is currently using Agile, right? So if we wanted to customize this, we can go ahead and go to the Process Customization page, and it's going to tell us you can't customize this because this is the Agile template. It's the built-in template yes. for Agile. But what you can do is create an inherited process. Okay. So it will inherit the stuff from Agile, but then now you'll have the ability to come in here and start modifying it. So we'll call this Able Agile. So if I want to do this, basically, I'll pick whichever built-in process is closest to the one I want to create. Yes. Start with that, and then I can start changing things around. Yep. So now you can add new work item types. You can drill into a specific work item and add and remove fields and, and change things as well. Right. So you can really customize these work item templates so they work in the process that you want them to work. Very nice. Now, is this something that, let's say I'm managing a huge set of teams, and I have a process that I want to be repeatable across projects. Yep. Do I have to customize each time, or is there a way to export the settings and import? Or That's a great question. All you need to do is just create your custom template once, uh -huh. and then now when you create a new team project, it will go ahead and remember that drop down where it said Scrum, right. CMMI, and Agile? It will have all of your custom so templates. So it'll have as well. Able Agile. Yeah. Now. Okay. So then the rest of the teams, that's the one that they would use. Got it. Yep. Makes sense. Yep. Super powerful, super useful. Sounds that way. Yeah. Awesome. Anything else to share? Uh, go to dev.azure.com, create yourself an organization, create yourself a team project, and start using Azure boards. Uh, the only other thing that I wanted to say is that if you're using GitHub, we do have GitHub integration with Azure Boards as well. And that's easy enough to, to set up. So you'd go into your project settings, go to GitHub connections, and from here, you would connect up to your GitHub account. And then now you have two-way integration between GitHub and your Azure Boards as well. So is this, uh, so I understand issues and work items in GitHub? Almost, but not quite. Right? Okay. So, so this is a work in progress right now. There is no uh, integration with the issues, but issues are great, right, in terms of, of, hey, something is happening in my open source project, cool, let's, it's an issue, let's fix it, let's do whatever. So that works great for that, but if you wanted a little bit more power, a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more control over your different work items, for instance, if you wanted to track a full project, you can't track a full project with issues. Right. right? Exactly. But I can track from sprint to sprint with boards. But then if I set up the integration correctly, uh, then I'll be able to, as I do my commits, I can say uh, pound whatever the number, and it will automatically link back up to. OK, so I can have my work items in Azure Boards reference the issues in GitHub. Yes. Nice. Yep, yep, yep. Very good. Great. Well, it sounds like this will simplify things, save me buying a lot of post-it notes, <laughs> paper, and, and pens. Thanks for sharing this. Absolutely. Thanks, man. All right.